I'm Miss Quack from Learn But Mighty, an English teacher. So today, uh, welcome to the blog. And we are only two days away from the PSLE English written examination. So for those who are sitting for the exam, I hope that you are not too pressurized as you revise for it. Today, I will be sharing a few last minute tips on comprehension open-ended and comprehension close. And I hope that these tips will help you to save some marks in your paper. I will be starting with the comprehension open-ended section first. So, in today's comprehension open-ended tips, I will be sharing with you two ways in which you can make your answer clearer and more accurate. So let's begin. Tip number one. Explain unclear pronouns in your answers. Now, what are pronouns? Pronouns are basically words such as his, her, their, it, them. When you define such pronouns, it's very helpful in making your answers clearer for all types of comprehension questions, including open-ended as well as table form questions. When pronouns are not clearly explained, your answer becomes unclear. You surely do not want the marker to go, hmm, what is this child talking about in his answer? I don't know. And then your answer will be marked wrong. So how do we avoid including unclear pronouns in our answers? Well, simply follow these two steps. Number one, avoid lifting the entire sentence or phrase as it is into your answer. Instead, you should define any unclear pronouns in your sentence first. So let's take a look at an example. Read the passage and look at the question. So this example passage goes like this. After seating myself behind the guide, the local guide set off. The guide was as adept on the motorcycle as his ancestor was on horseback. We cut through sandy landscapes and meandering rivers. Four hours later, we finally reached the base of the Blue Mountain. From there, the motorcycle could go no further. I bid goodbye to the guide and began hiking up here. Now look at the question. The question is actually asking for you to provide a reason for why the writer had to hike up here. So we need to first look for the answer. Using the question keywords, hike up here, can you see that these keywords are found in the last line of the passage? And also, the answer is nearby and it's found in the line from there, the motorcycle could go no further. However, should we lift this entire sentence into our answer? The answer is no. Why is that so? That is because there is an unclear pronoun there in your answer. So what should we do? We should actually look in the passage and see what this there is referring to. And then subsequently include this detail into our answer. So looking back at the passage, if you read further on, can you see that the word there is actually referring to a place, which is the base of the Blue Mountain? So we should include this detail into our answer. And the correct answer would be, the author could not go further than the base of the Blue Mountain on the guard's motorcycle. I hope after listening to this part of the video, that you are clearer about how to define unclear pronouns in your comprehension answers. Let's move on to the second tip. Tip number two. Do not paraphrase accurate details into inaccurate synonyms if you are unsure. Now, students have been taught to paraphrase their answers because they want to avoid lifting. Lifting means that you copy the entire sentence as how it looks like from the beginning all the way to the end of the full stop. Sometimes, students are also very careless when doing their work. And that means that they write down an answer that do not follow the, post, the passage details clearly because they think that a similar idea would be marked correct. However, this is not true. So, the learning point here is do not paraphrase 
any details or ideas from the passage if you do not know how to do so. Let's take a look at an example paragraph and the question. In this example paragraph, the passage goes like this. The boys rushed to the badly damaged bus and Mr. Tan issued orders regarding the responsibility of each student. Tom was assigned to provide first aid for the injured passengers. As he opened his first aid kit, an elderly man with a deep gash on his forearm was brought to him. The wound was bleeding badly. Without shying away from it, Tom carefully checked the wound for glass fragments and tied a temporary bandage around it. The question is, what did Tom do with the elderly man's wound? So based on this question, the answer is actually found in the last line of the passage. Let's take a look at how a student has paraphrased this last line in his answer. The answer he gave was, Tom carefully checked the wound for glass fragments and tied a temporary plaster around the cut. How many marks would you give to this student? For me, out of two marks, I would only give him one mark. That is because the first part of his answer is correct, but the second part was paraphrased inaccurately. For instance, the word plaster is not the same meaning as bandage, so it's an inaccurate synonym for bandage. Similarly, the word cut does not illustrate the elderly man's wound accurately. The elderly man had suffered from a gash, which is a deep cut. Hence, this student will not get the full marks because he had paraphrased accurate details into inaccurate synonyms. The correct answer should be Tom checked the elderly man's wound carefully for glass fragments and tied a temporary bandage around it. Can you see that the right answer does not have any paraphrased words or details? The learning point here is that if you do not know how to change a certain passage detail or idea accurately, avoid doing so. However, what if you are afraid of being penalised for lifting? Well, you can do these two steps in order to avoid sounding like you simply copied from the passage. So these two steps are Number one, change the sentence structure of your answer. What this means is that you could start with the subject of the question or you can follow the format that has been provided for you in the table form questions. And similarly, as mentioned in tip number one, you should define any unclear pronouns in the given sentence in your answer. So we've come to the end of the comprehension open-ended section. Let's move on to the comprehension closed section. In comprehension flows, the passage will always tie different types of ideas in different ways. And as the students answering the blanks, we need to be able to identify these various relationships. So very commonly, passages like to bring in two contrasting ideas. So today, my first tip for you is to learn how to identify when the passage is bringing in two contrasting ideas and how to um, tackle these blanks. How do we identify when a passage is bringing in opposite ideas? Well, connectors will help you to recognise it. So, connectors that bring in contrasting ideas include words like although, however, but, despite, and in spite of. Learn to recognise these words and that they are bringing in opposite ideas. Step 2. Read the whole sentence or even the whole paragraph carefully in order to understand what you're talking about. This will also help you to identify the two opposite ideas. And lastly, step 3. Fill in the blanks accordingly. Usually, when they bring contrasting ideas, they will first tell you what one idea is and your job is to fill in the blanks for the contrasting idea. So usually, an antonym is needed that, and that means you provide a word that is the opposite meaning of the first idea. So let's take a look at the example paragraph 
and the questions inside. This is a short paragraph and it looks like this. Although the glass winged butterfly looks blank because its wings resemble thin glass, it is actually a resilient species and it is just as strong as other types of butterflies. So let's practice the three sets. Set one, can you identify any connectors that show that they are bringing in contrasting ideas? Yes, the connector is actually the word although. Step two, have you read the passage carefully and identified the two contrasting ideas? So these two ideas are actually idea one, the butterfly is actually a strong species of butterfly. Okay, because of the words resilient and the phrase as strong as other types of butterflies. And the second idea in which a blank appears is actually a contrasting idea to tell you that the butterfly in terms of appearance does not look strong. So in your blank, you need to fill in answers that are antonyms of the word strong. So possible and correct answers would include weak, frail, fragile and vulnerable. So after listening to this tip, I hope that you have learned how to identify contrasting ideas in the closed passage and also how to tackle such blanks. Let's move on to the second tip. Now, in comprehension clothes, blanks can be filled with a multitude of words and that includes nouns and verbs. However, take note that nouns and verbs have different word forms. For example, nouns can have singular or plural forms and verbs can have singular or plural forms, different types of tenses or even the infinitive form. So when we fill in the blanks for comprehension clause and our answer is a noun or a verb, we need to be careful and we need to check for language clues that tells us what word form our answer should be in. So this is my second tip for comprehension clues. Let's take a look at this paragraph. My name is Daryl Kramer and I am 3 feet tall. I suffer from Duarte which is an illness that affects the development of the arms and legs. Hence, I have very short limbs and people always stare at their length. I was grocery shopping one day in my hometown when I heard a boy shouted from across the aisle, Mom, come here! There is a lady here my size! Now, look at this paragraph. Can you see that there are two answers and the student has already answered them? But where are the answers wrong? That's because of grammar. Let's take a look at the first question and see what is wrong with it. In the first question, can you see that the word limb is actually correct in terms of context? That is because these two lines are actually talking about the arms and legs being very short because of dwarfism. Hence, limb covers arms and legs. However, should this blank be in a singular form? Well, no. Now, if you had read the sentence carefully, you would have seen the plural pronoun ver that refers back to this blank. So, it tells you that your answer should actually be in the plural form. And the answer should be limbs, not limb. Similarly, the second question also has grammatical errors. Let's take a look at it now. The second answer should be in terms of a voice shouting loudly. And that is because of the clue from across the aisle. However, should your answer be in the past tense? Now, even though this whole sentence is in past tense, your answer cannot be in past tense because this blank is part of a unique structure Okay, of I heard a boy blank. Can you see that this sentence is in the verb noun verb structure? When you see sentences in such structures and the first verb is a sensorial verb, your second verb must be an infinitive. Hence, your answer here in question 2 cannot be shouted but must be shout. So the four tips that I have shared in this video today are number one, define unclear pronouns in your answer and number two, 
Do not paraphrase accurate details into inaccurate synonyms in comprehension open-ended. As for comprehension goals, the two tips I've shared with you today are number one, try to identify opposite ideas in the passage and fill in the blanks accordingly. And number two, check your language clues, especially if your answer is a noun or a verb. I hope that these tips will help to remind you to check your answers and make sure that they are as clear and as accurate as they can be in these two components. So we have come to the end of this video and here I would like to wish all of you who are sitting for PSLE all the very best for your exams. Remember, if you have put in your best effort before and during the exams, you will have no regrets. So good luck! <laughs>